Before us tonight, there's a chalice sitting on the table, as it normally does. But tonight, instead of holding elements of juice and bread on the table, the chalice holds ashes. The ashes come from the triumphant choruses of hosannas that rang out before. They come from the burning of the palms from a previous Palm Sunday. Tonight, the symbol of hope and the emblems of love take on a different form. These ashes come from these palms, and they come tonight to receive an outward sign of disfigurement that our transgressions have left upon the world, that have left upon one another, and left upon what we strive to call the kingdom of God here with us. So come tonight and worship in spirit and in truth that our lives and our living might be changed to reflect the teachings of Jesus. As we begin our time of worship and throughout the service tonight, you are invited to reflect upon what you might offer in service to Christ. Let us sing together. of the psalmist. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing heart. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. 
for you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Do good to Zion. In your good pleasure, rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in right sacrifices, in burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. The word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Ash Wednesday, it's kind of a solemn day. It's the start of Lent, which is a word derived um, from the lengthening, the meaning mean, the lengthening of time from winter into spring. More than this, it's a time of year when we intentionally focus on the path Christ has laid out for us to follow. To be true to God's word, true to God's calling on our lives, true to the faith and hope that we share. You know, though, sometimes it's kind of hard to focus on spring when winter doesn't seem to want to give up. I mean, I'm sick of these ice storms. You know, we could have actually come to church on Sunday, turns out, but we needed to make the decision on Friday, and on Friday, you couldn't go anywhere. I'm tired of having to close the office. Although, you know, working from home in a pair of sweats is not bad. <laughs> but luckily, you know, it's, today was beautiful. I wanted to move my desk out there. So maybe better is on the horizon and maybe it'll stay that way. But while we're beginning to look towards spring, we have to live in the reality that winter is not yet over and we could have another snowstorm or another ice storm. Snow is something the Bible uses often to talk about that which is pure that which is clean, that which is righteous. And truly those crystal formations of snowflakes are beautiful. There are many different shapes and sizes and amazingly, every one is unique. If you've ever gotten to see one, you know, like under a microscope type. But despite their uniqueness, snowflakes have one thing in common. They're dirty at their core. Oddly enough, a snowflake starts as a dust particle, which serves as its nucleus. So every snowflake has a speck of dust with it. And like snowflakes, we have been beautifully created by God. And we're, you know, the greatest of all creation, right? Us humans, we are God's pride and joy, if everyone tells us. And yet, like snowflakes, we have dirty hearts. We're all marked by an innate selfishness. We're stained at the core of our being, a little dirty in the middle. But in the season of Lent, we remember that the dirt at our core is made clean. There was a part of the scripture that I didn't read earlier, and that's the heading. The heading of Psalm 51 says, for the director of music, which means it was, this psalm was to be read in worship. For the director of music, a psalm of David, when the prophet Nathan came to him after David had committed adultery with Bathsheba. Yeah, let's put that in the, in the, in the bulletin. Ouch! That's a little direct, you know, putting that heading on, on right there where everybody can see it. Where's God's grace for David in that? Why can't David just put that in the dustbin and put it behind him? Why can't this just be a beautiful, gorgeous prayer that people can recite and say, yes, I feel just like that. You see, David's sin is also recorded in 2 Samuel 11 for everybody to read. And right on top of that, it's right there in the heading in the worship book. The Bible called David a man after God's own heart. 
Yet David didn't just commit little sins. David broke commandments. He coveted, he had an affair, and then tried to cover it up. And when that went wrong, he had the guy murdered. All of this took time, and he thought he'd gotten away with it. A man after God's heart. Really? David planned his sins, he acted on them, and he was comfortable with where he was. Power. Psalm 51 not only contains a public exposure of a great man's atrocities, it's also the documentation of that man's feelings and prayer after the situation. David poured out his heart to God in prayer. He knows that he was caught in his sins. And in this prayer, he admits his sins. And he knows that he can't fix them and he can't hide them. His prayer is a plea to God that he wants to be made right. He knows that the only way that can happen is for God to wipe the slate clean. Tonight, we are beginning the process of this 40 days of self-reflection. 40 days of Lent moving towards Easter to commit ourselves to the process of allowing the Holy Spirit to show us that we are more like David in our pride and our arrogance than we'd really like to admit. Tonight we commit to a journey that begins in the low light of the evening and goes to the blackness of Good Friday with the knowledge that the light is just down the road on Easter Sunday. Lent is a period of time when we reflect on who and how we really are at our core, not just how we want people to perceive us. However, Lent is not a time to be depressed, and it is not a time to wallow in our failures. It is a time to free our soul. A friend of mine named Andrew Moran wrote a beautiful song called Ashes to Ashes. And after we do a little litany and prayer, Julianne's going to sing that for us. But in that song, Andrew writes these words. She says, we watch and we wait and we hope and we pray and we try to take a path that returns to you. A breath of life a thirst, a fire. We live our lives to know that we're called by love. Our soul is searching, thirsting for you, and we long to see your face, O oh God. Fill us up again. Ashes to ashes, water and rust. We are but dust on a sunbeam. You hold us in your hand, you call us by name, and we rise from the ashes again. Tonight, we're not asking anyone to declare any deep, dark secret to anybody except God. We are suggesting that by receiving the sign of the ashes on your forehead or on your hand, that you are praying like King David prayed, created me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Ashes to ashes. Water and rust, we are but dust on a sunbeam. You hold in your hand, you call us by name, and we rise from ashes again. Amen. Let us join in confessing our sins. Holy, Holy One, one have, have mercy. mercy. Christ, Christ, have mercy. God, have, have mercy. mercy. As disciples slept that night, Christ prayed, seeking forgiveness for the world. Most holy, holy and merciful God, God, we confess to you and to one another. We have, we have sinned, sinned by our, our own fault, fault in thought, in, thought, in word, indeed, and in deed, by what we, we have done, done and by what we have left undone. When the hungry were before him, Jesus fed them. 
I can't see that. <laughs> when the naked were presented to him, he clothed them. When the outcasts bravely made their way through the crowd, he welcomed them. When there was injustice, Jesus sought justice. Where there was hatred, he offered love. Where there was bitterness, he offered mercy. Where, the, where, where there was a cross, he offered himself. And when was it, he asked, that you did the same in my name? Holy, Holy One, one have, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. God, God have, have mercy. mercy. Mark us and remind us that you give us life. You alone sustain us by your breath and your mercy. Holy One, have, have mercy. mercy. Christ, Christ, have mercy. God, have mercy. Gracious God, you created, you created us out of, out of the dust, dust of the earth and, and breathed into us the breath of life. By your hand we live. And by and your, your hands we return when all, when all our days are done. Grant that the awareness of our mortality may lead us not to fear, but to faith. In our weakness, teach us to look to you for strength. In our failures, to turn to you and find forgiveness. And in our dying, to await the gift of everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We watch, we wait, we hope, and we pray. We try to take a path that returns to you ashes to ashes water and rust we are but dust on a sunbeam you hold in your hand you call us by name and we rise from ashes again. A breath of We live our lives to know that we're called by love. Ashes to ashes, water and rust, we are but dust on the sunbeam you hold in your hand you call us by name and we rise from ashes again my soul is thirsting for you Uh... 
again Ashes to ashes Water and rust We are but dust on a sunbeam You hold in your hand You call us by name And we rise from ashes again We're going to move into a time of prayer stations, and I want to talk about them just a little bit. We're not a good group to stay silent, and that's okay. Over here is a place for pray for peace, but you can pray for peace wherever you want to be. Next to it, there's a basin and a pitcher to help one another wash hands. Um, if you want to help wash somebody else's hands, um, you can go be there and you can sit in the chairs there so that you're not trying to bend down too far. Over here there is a little fountain with water running to just touch the water and remember your baptism. And over here is praying alms for the poor. But instead of just having you throw a dollar in, we've got the everything to make what we're call, what we call homeless bags. And so you get a Ziploc baggie, put a water in it and a, a peanut butter cheese cracker and a granola bar and a fruit snack and a thing of pretzels. Get the air out of it, seal it, and you can put it in here. Take some with you. We've got enough to make 120 bags tonight. But take some with you. And as you're driving down the street and there's someone on the street holding a sign, give it to them. And up here at the front uh, will be a place to come and receive the ashes. There's also the candle lighting stations around the room. I'm not asking people to do this in silence, but do respect other people as they are in prayer. But feel free to do it at your own pace. Oh, and the communion is back there as well. Sorry. So some of you picked it up on your way in because you're used to doing that, and some of you read the bulletin and didn't, and either one is fine. And praying for uh, personal prayer is back over here. Um, and there's Bibles on the tables if you want to read. There are hymnals on the table if you want to look through hymns. But let's spend the next 20 to 30 minutes in prayer. <laughs> 